because I've noticed there's been a lot of uh, imposters <laughs> Everywhere, yeah, that have been uh, popping up, and they—they're really good professors. They're really good uh, theorizers. They're like, well, we studied Andre Hatchett's course, and Andre says you should do this, but have they actually rolled out a notary agency before? No. Have they actually been a notary? No. They just know how to theorize um, the actual process of the things. So. If you have a chance to, I mean, getting the coach is even better, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out to California Notary Agency, uh, Renee. She's she's probably she's my protege, Andre. Shout out Renee. Shout out Renee. Um, she she's she's killing the game, bro. Mm. Um, I probably like cut off my coaching because of her. Like, I, I I'm not even doing coaching anymore. You're really I'm you. Like, all right, I got a winner. I'm out of here. <laughs> But, you know, if it wasn't for your course, there, I probably would have made at least two to three years of mistakes trying to bump my head against the wall, trying to figure things out, being pissed off, high anxiety, high stress level, spinning my wheels in the mud, trying to figure everything out. So, um, yeah, it's getting into a course and getting a coach is imperative. And it's easier to quit when you don't have accountability. If you know you got something, a program, it's like if you have some live classes there, you know you have a community to, to kind of kick you in the butt if you need to kick it in the butt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what people need. They, they, they need to know that Tuesday at seven o'clock, someone's gonna be there to tell them, even if it's the same thing they already learned before, they might need to hear it again. Yeah, yeah. So when when you're doing when you're rolling out the the whole because I know you have you have a uh, class coming up don't you? Uh, we have class tonight. Yeah, we have class tonight. Yeah. Oh, you got a class coming out tonight. Mm -hmm. So like, what what's that class about? Uh, class this is the signing stamp with confidence class. So so this is where we go over uh, how to notarize the exact documents. Uh, I think we're going to do a loan closing packet tonight. Mm -hmm. So so for some people. They get the marketing, they get the advertising, they get the good logo, they get all that stuff, right, T? But they're nervous and they get hung up. Where do I sign? <laughs> Where do they stand? And they freeze because they say that I don't want to mess. I know you hear that. I don't want to mess up. And I'm saying, okay, I get you don't want to mess up. So let's go through this. And here's the thing. You can't get fired if you mess up. You might have to give a refund. You might have to do it over again. But no one's going to fire you. Yeah. You got to get out there to make this thing happen. Hey, honey, you got to get out there. All right. The biggest issue only working with low signing agents. All right, excellent. So, now I know what the direction that y'all will like some of the answers. All right, so for those of you who are new, I'm gonna go over the five critical documents. Um, if you can give me a chance, in the chat, please name some of the critical documents you think they were gonna go over. Um, do you think that, um, let's see, a power of attorney is a critical document? Do you think a AKA, a signature affidavit is a critical document? Do you think that, a uh, occupancy is a critical document. Put the critical documents in the chat right now for me to make sure that you understand where we're going. So I say all of that to say, um, typically when I call a borrower, I make sure I follow up with a text message. So I have a simple text verbiage that I have in my phone, just in case that they're not able to uh, answer my phone. And they usually appreciate that because nine times out of 10, they are literally, they are literally at work, right? Working professionals. So I'll follow up with a message saying, hi, my name is Renee and I am your loan signing agent. I am not a notary public and uh, I'm sorry, I am a loan signing agent and I am assigned to your case. And I just want to let you know that um, we are scheduled to be there at 6.30 p.m. on April the 1st, 2022. 
uh, I just wanna let you know that it may take about 45 minutes to an hour. So I would like for you know the area to be signed at a table if that's something that you have to accommodate. We will sign in whatever color ink that is a part. Usually blue is, I would say king. And if the confirmation says black, use otherwise. Certain states require a certain color, right? For the universal color, I will say blue. Just in Miss Renee opinion, uh, in my experience. And then lastly, I will make sure that I confirm the address. There has been a lot of times that I did not confirm the address. And I actually went to their office instead of their resident, or I went to their resident instead of the address, and there was some type of mix up. So one of the things is to make sure that you confirm the address before you get off that phone. Uh, lastly, I let them know that if they have any question or concern, feel free that I am reachable and I'm textable. They really tend to like that. I see the chat is actually blowing up. So that's great when it comes to critical documents. So we just talked about the script of what to say. Make sure you have your address, make sure it's the correct address. And sometimes if you have the loan documents, I would actually go over what is the vesting amount, right? So I would go over the vesting amount when it comes to uh, them particular, because when it comes to the vesting, you don't wanna make sure that the signing is gonna be closed because of the fact that you forgot to go over the vesting, right? So I say all of that to say, it's very important for you to go over the vesting, okay? So let's make sure that we make sure that we go over the vesting if we have the documents in time, okay? Just in time. Some people may not actually have that. So I say all of that to say, this is some of the things that you wanna go over. So now that the chat is actually uh, set for us, let's see what you have. We have the note, ding, that is correct. The AKA, I see that some people like uh, put the AKA. The AKA is called the signature, Affidavit, that is not considered a critical document in the thing. The settlement statement, the alter statement is, I would not call the critical document. Over that, I would call the CD as a critical document, okay? Um, let's keep going. We're able to see that. I kind of showed you that on my Calendly um, opt-in form, but Definitely, it's not something that you need right now. It's something that you may aspire to get eventually, okay? Uh, business cards and brochures, I showed you how important it is for you to get business cards and brochures. Okay, so with the uh, brochures, I recommend that you do the brochures more than the business cards because it stands out more, right? Um, okay, and we also went over payment gateways. You have to have some type of payment gateway set up. I have PayPal, I have Square, which could also be like Cash App because I have a lot of notaries that I can pay through Cash App. I don't have QuickBooks, but I know a lot of notaries that do use QuickBooks. Um, and then I have uh, Stripe as well. So here's a here's the cool thing about that. Sometimes, like let's just say they try to book an appointment with your Calendly. Um, don't ever let that sale go. Be sure that you you get that person back on the phone, and if they tell you, "Hey, I'm having some problems uh, processing my order to book an appointment," you can say, "You know what? No, no problem." I can take your order over the phone. Believe it or not, customers pay over the phone. I get a lot of customers that pay over the phone. Uh, just discard all of that valuable information that you have, like their credit card number, expiration date, security code. Make sure you discard all of that. It, it's not lying around for somebody prying eyes to see, right? So I do that once I get the information and then I'll put, I'll input it myself through PayPal or, you know, whatever other payment gateway I have. So <clears throat> be sure to keep that in mind. Never let the sale go. It, you do have other options. If for some reason there's a technical glitch somewhere, take the credit card over the phone and then you can always.
out and spell it right. If they say you can't cross it out and spell it right, guess what? A redraw is going to have to happen. And now it's not guaranteed that you're going to get all the money that you was promised because you didn't conclude the signing. So certain steps to make you a great notary. The purpose is to make you a great notary. So I'm coming on here with my coach to tell you some of the things that through my journey, I wish somebody would have told me. That was it. All right. So let's keep going. All right. Now there's a little initial. Pay attention to that initial. Because baby, let me tell you, let me tell you, these initials were a demon to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm speaking spiritual. But it was a demon to me because I sometimes overlooked it, overlooked it, and I had to go back. And going back and not getting paid to go back is not good. So I wish that you better than me, okay? And I'm coming up in here because I don't want you to miss some of the mistakes that I missed as a notary. Yeah, I was able to scale my business very, very fastly. When I was a notary, my first month, I made 2.5. My next month, I made 6,000. Why? Because I actually saw a girl that looked like me on YouTube and told me her first 30 days, she made 6,000. And I said, wow, she told me all the recipe and I just scaled my business. And I'll share, I'll share that YouTube video with you guys. And if you know me, you already know I already shared it with you. So that was some of the secrets that she told me, just like the secrets that I'm telling you. And then my third month, I made 6,000. My fourth month, I made 7,000. My fifth month, I made 8,000, almost nine. And then I said, hmm, I need a coach. I said, there's too many orders out here. Too many orders out here. And I'm not getting all of them. So I scaled my business to a signing service. And I got my coaching from Mr. Toledo. When I did that, he was able to show me how to scale my business and still work in the company until I was actually ready to actually launch to the public, right? So I brought one person in and I would call it a little bitty signing service, right? At the time, right? I brought some people in that I coached to kind of take order. cards that are pinned up on a board somebody's going to go pull your phone number off your brochure first because it's bigger it's larger and it pushes everybody else to the side that makes sense so that is valuable right there assistant living same thing applies hospice same thing applies hospitals uh Again, you'll have the security guard at the front or you'll have the receptionist up front. Um, and then you may have to talk to a social worker uh, to do that. Now, the trick is with nursing homes, hospitals, hospice, assistant living facilities like that, they do not have a notary on staff. The reason is they don't want to be... Due to medical and financial power of attorney, they're usually getting a transfer of death instrument, which is also called a TODI, or um, most likely they're going to get a last will and testament or a trust package. If they don't mention that to you, I highly suggest that you suggest it to them. Be like, are you guys getting a last will and trust in place as well? 
you know, just just casually mention it, mention it, right? Um, because it will put you in a position not only to plant the seed for them to take care of their fine family affairs, but it also positions you to get another assignment through that family. So as you can see, a lot of this stuff with power of attorney is very family oriented. Okay. And this is what they see. Simple, clean, no big deal. Hey, you want to save money on your next traveling notary service? Go ahead and, and, and get this free coupon that we have. Now, this is just a mock-up. I see the little error. It says the 20% off. We changed it to 10. But you can add images. You can add videos. You can add all kinds of different things on there where you can entice the customers to want to give you your information. Remember, social media, the reason why, the first thing that they ask you before you can create an account is your email. That is the very first thing that they ask you before you can create an account because they know they can remarket to you. They can remarket. gem it is a gem and i i didn't realize so many people would want to sign up for just to say ten dollars they're like man maybe i should have increased the the amount of money that they're saved no ten dollars is working perfectly so yeah this is the email that they get and then what they'll do is a lot of times um, they'll just call the number on here or I reach out to them and call me like, hey, we just got your um, your online inquiry. How can I help you today? And then I go into the call script. And, and then when I get down to the price, I'll let them know that, hey, you also get that $10 coupon code off. So I'm going to apply your coupon code USNA1137. And your price just went from $178 to $168. And then I hush. I don't say a word. But I believe from, from the research that I've been doing, a voucher is going to be really, really powerful, more than the coupon code. Because people like vouchers, people like credit, right? Things to get credited to their account. Um, so I created with my my notary agency logo right here. It's going to say like $30 off. Of course, I can always mark my prices up and then drop it down. That's why you always want to have high prices. If your price is too low, you can't offer discounts. And, and then if you can't offer a discount, your customers don't. better excellent 
So you don't have to worry about that. All right, let's keep going. We have one of the fourth critical documents. Go ahead and put four in the chat, okay? Four in the chat, four in the chat. All right, I see a lot of fours going. All right, now it's called the deed of trust. Deed of trust. This is one of the important ones. And they'll give you a notary hack because no one ever pay attention to the second page. The second page is very important, okay? And so as section B. Section B is so important when it comes to the deed of trust, okay? Why is it a deed and why is it a mortgage? Well, what I was told by Carol Ray, and she was one of the best in the industry, okay? When it comes to teaching loan documents, okay? Well, what Carol Ray told to me was that- One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what Carol Ray said to me was that the difference between the mortgage deed and the deed of trust is all about who is listed as number D, where the property is and what the rules are when it comes to foreclosure. It's not so much that we need to know as a notary, but it's good information to know. In section D, these are the people that needs to be notified if your property is in foreclosure. So why is it a deed or a mortgage? Well, in counties in Florida, it's a different type of rule. So they, they plan a different type of game, okay? So in Florida properties, you're going to see D because they have to notify the sheriff in order for foreclosure to happen. They can't just notify the trustees of the actual mortgage. So they have to go one more step. So when they notify the sheriff for foreclosure, the sheriff has to be involved. They just can't foreclosure on the house, right? So that's one of the real reason why it says mortgage versus says deed of trust. Hope that was a notary hat. If you think that that was great, put notary hat in the chat. Go ahead and put notary hat in the chat for, I'm pretty sure a lot of notaries didn't know that. You just saw, oh, well, it, it says mortgage, but I don't really know why. So that's one of the important things that I hope that you got that. All right. So now let's focus on number B. B is the vesting. As a notary, just like the RTC is important, it's our job as a notary, at least Ms. Renee would say, is that you go over section B. Section B is so important. Why? Because that can really make you only get a portion of your fee if you don't pay attention. So that's why I say, if you get the documents early, it's an extra thing for you to do, but it may be important for you to identify, does this name match the confirmation? Meaning, is the confirmation sheet that you receive is correct and is the D matching it? Let's do our proof me mechanism. If not, you know, drive 20 minutes away, drive 30 minutes away, drive an hour away, you know, sit there and you're going to go over this. And if it's not part of your five critical documents that come to the front of the, the loan document, you know, sit there and, you know, realize that the D, her name is Miss Misspelled or his name is Miss Misspelled. And if that's the case, you better pray, pray, pray to make sure that title or the signing service approve for you to cross it out not necessary you but the borrower cross it out and spell it right if they say you can't cross it out and spell it right, guess what a redraw is going to have to happen and now it's not guaranteed that you're going to get all the money that you was promised because you didn't conclude the signing so certain steps to make you a great notary the purpose is to make you a great notary so i'm coming on here with my coach to tell you some of the things that during my journey I wish somebody would have told me. That was it. All right. So let's keep going. All right. Now there's a little initial. Pay attention to that initial. Because baby, let me tell you, let me tell you. These initials were a demon to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm speaking spiritual. But it was a demon to me. Because I sometimes overlooked it. Overlooked it. And I had to go back. And going back and not getting paid to go back 
is not good. So I wish that you better than me, okay? And I'm coming up in here because I don't want you to miss some of the mistakes that I missed as a notary. Yeah, I was able to scale my business very, very fastly. When I was a notary, my first month, I made 2.5. My next month, I made 6,000. Why? Because I actually saw a girl that looked like me on YouTube and told me her first 30 days, she made 6,000. And I said, wow. She told me all the recipe and I just scaled my business. And I'll share, I'll share that YouTube video with you guys. And if you know me, you already know I already shared it with you. So that was some of the secrets that she told me, just like the secrets that I'm telling you. And then my third month, I made 6,000. My fourth month, I made 7,000. My fifth month, I made 8,000, almost nine. And then I said, hmm, I need a coach. I said, there's too many orders out here. Too many orders out here. And I'm not getting all of them. So I scaled my business to a signing service. And I got my coaching from Mr. Toledo. When I did that, he was able to show me how to scale my business and still work in the company until I was actually ready to actually launch to the public, right? So I brought one person in and I would call it a little bitty signing service, right? At the time, right? I brought some people in that I coached to kind of take orders from me that was locally and then locally becomes regional and regional becomes nationwide. Someone told me, hey, do you have signings in Alaska? I said, okay. And then I realized Alaska terrain is very hard. So I stay out of Alaska. So if you're ever thinking about being a signing service and you want to be nationwide, don't go to Alaska because that terrain notary is telling me if you fly me up the mountain, what you mean? And I'm in the military too. So you would think I know terrain, but man, those masks are a little bit hard, but I do go to Hawaii. So with that being said, we do offer signings in Hawaii. But let's get back to this, okay? So we're on page two, you guys, page two. If y'all like what I'm saying, if you really like what I'm saying, please show me some love in the chat. Put some hearts, put some hearts in the chat um, and show me some love because that's how more excited I get and more hacks that I drop. If y'all dry, I won't put no hacks, no more hacks. So show me some love, okay? All right, excellent. So now second hat, this right here, how many people pay attention? to the second page or you just fly through the 14 pages of the deed of trust or the mortgage and you really don't pay attention to the second page well the second page is important you guys because it's going to tell you if you have any writers if the second page checks something that means it's important in the writers who taught me this my mentor and Kira Ray so I'm telling you Tara Ray was the GOAT okay, to loan signing. And guess what? Laura, she's Judge Judy when it comes to notarization. All right. So if you don't know who those two people is, I promise you, you should learn from the best. All right. All right. So now if you have writers here, what that means is, guess what? That you're going to have the next form after the packet. So let me ask you, does anybody know what a plan development writer is? What is the purpose of a plan development writer? That means that they have HOAs, right? So you want to make sure when you come across a plan development writer that the name of the HOA community is correct. Little things like this can make you a great notary. This can make you go direct. This can make you say, called her one day I had been working a job for a while I had saved up some money had been reading all of these different books and just educating myself on finance and stock market and all these different things mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what I mean um I'm ready to buy a house and she was like that's not cool and shit but um you should probably buy yourself a multi-unit mm. you know and, um that was like the the deciding factor on which direction I was gonna go because I had just read the same thing in Rich Dad Poor Dad and her telling me that was like kind of like confirmation it was like the bell going off on my head like ding 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 that's it mm -hmm. go get your that's the second time you heard it, and then this time it came from somebody you love and trust so it only made sense 
And she was like, um, go look into this program called NACA. Um, they're a program where you can, you know what I mean, get in with them, no money down, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, oh man, that sounds too good to be true. But she was like, it's legit. And um, I promise you, you know what I mean? If you do it, you're gonna, you're gonna be happy. So I went through the NACA program and my first property, I ended up getting me a four unit property uh, nice. in, a, in a very nice Chicago suburb called Forest Park. Um, right outside of the city, um, great amenities, access to the Green Line and the Blue Line train system, the expressway gets you downtown, uh, 10 minutes, um, Walmart, churches, malls, everything in the area, really nice schools. Um, I got a really good price on it. And um, in addition to me getting a good price on it, I didn't have to put any money down on the property. So I got the property with no money down. Um, when I closed on the property, I walked away from the closing table with the $5,000 check. And I closed at the end of the month. So the day that I closed, I went to the building. I started moving in. I started getting rent checks the very next day. Wow. So this, so I closed on the property. I kept all of the money that I had saved up, which was about $12,000. So I still had that in my account. Okay. They gave me another $5,000 after I closed, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, which ran right. up 10 grand cash. And then I moved into the building, and the next day I started receiving rent checks of $1,000 or better from each individual property, which was three units at the time. So That's I wonderful. Because So you hit it out the park on your first go. Oh, man, it was a, a grand slam. Was, like, right. Okay, so let me ask you this. How important was your credit for you to obtain, acquire that first piece of property? Was it well, With the program that I went through, um, it didn't really matter about credit because they're more so... Um, concerned about your debt to income ratio and what's and what's on your credit. So your credit score doesn't matter, but they don't want you to have any debt on your credit. So like no collections or anything like that. You can get by even with student loans and stuff because you're paying that, but it will just go against your debt to income ratio, like what you could afford towards a home mm -hmm. property. But um, with NACA, they don't really concern themselves with your credit score. They just want to see that you don't have any debt in your current name. and. Um, You know, so my audience, I have a, a large audience of notaries, right? And okay. they're constantly looking for different ways of marketing themselves, but they, they always overlook it because I guess because copy writing is a stealth type of mm -hmm. craft, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> you don't see words the same. I, Donnie Bryant started, um, you know, kind of training me a little bit about it. And I started, you know, handwriting, mm -hmm. copy and stuff like that. And it was just like, I created one landing page, one. Oh, good for with you. Some, with, some, with some copy in there. I used okay. to just throw words together, right? Yeah, yeah. No conversions whatsoever. Yep. Now, now that I understand copy a little bit, that same landing page will start creating money. I'm like, this is freaking amazing. Like, if notaries would know about this, this would change everything for them. Yeah. So like for, for websites, they would find copy there, correct? Absolutely, yes. What, yes. what other places would they see copy? Um, let me see, websites. I mean, even social media. You know, when you're very intentional about posting something with the intent of getting somebody maybe to download your lead magnet or whatever freebie you're giving away, or if you're seeking to get more you know, clients for the notary business, I mean, that's a form of copywriting because mm -hmm. again, when you write words with the intent of selling something, that's copywriting. And so for someone in this sector, uh, being a notary, the biggest thing I would say is literally you have to put yourself in the shoes or in the mindset rather of your prospective customers. Mm -hmm. You know, why do people need a notary? Um, they're trying to purchase a house, right? Or they're trying to, um, I think one, one case study or something I read recently was like, somebody needed a notary because they needed like to hurry up and get a passport for their kid or something. I mean, yeah. there are all these different scenarios. And so what you want to do is put yourself in the mindset of the individual that needs your services and literally just speak to them, you know, um, especially if you have a mobile notary company, that's even better because you're literally telling them like, look, we will come to you. Like we're, this is the convenience factor that we're bringing to you. You don't have to worry about coming to us. We'll just come to you. Um, but that's the biggest thing I, I tell people all the time. A lot of folks 
mistakenly assume that to be successful as a, uh, I was going to say as a notary, as a copywriter, it means that you have to know how to write grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Actually, the success, the success factor that comes with being a copywriter mm -hmm. is empathy. You have to empathize with people. So the, the more that you're able to hone that skill of empathy, hmm. the better you are at being able to sell people your products and services through words. understand but one of the things that i found because i was only in corporate for one year of my life and i don't even know if you call that corporate i just had a salary but i don't i don't understand a lot of, i don't understand a lot of the terminology <laughs> so when i was trying to launch these businesses i didn't know but think about it we're not taught how to start a business we're not taught right. to get an llc and get business bank accounts and all these we're not taught these things we don't know what a sop is we don't know what a board is and so i remember going to like to some of these events where it's like okay i'm making six figures it's time to scale and i would sit here and they're like yeah you need to get your women's registration or whatever these certifications are and all this stuff and i'm like <laughs> And I don't want to look stupid because I mean, you know, I'm over here making a decent income, so I must know what I'm doing. I would just be like, mm, you know what? Never mind. Let me just go back to doing what I do. And that's rolling up my sleeves and getting out here in these streets and grinding. <clears throat> but the truth is, y'all, we don't we don't have to work so hard if we understand the government be trying to throw us money. <clears throat> like we want to give you this money, but we don't know what's available. So urban ceo is supposed to be that bridge between the urban community because what you know and i call it we want to help you know how you got churches that say we want to help the unchurched get church well we want to help the unconference get conferenced and so we create environments where like yeah we might have a corporate person come and talking about funding but if you don't understand it don't worry i got you um excuse me ma'am we don't know what sop means can you please yeah. break it down for us and explain or career okay you want to climb the corporate ladder man we need to know how do we go and appropriately talk to a boss about getting the race because nobody teaches you that and not even in college relationships how can we build better relationships in the urban community so yeah like what i'm looking forward to is definitely urban ceo growing of course our book camps continue to be great 100 success rate everyone who has ever been to our book camp has completed a book um i'm just excited and, and you're and global I too yeah, uh, listen, 95% of my clients I've never physically met. They all over the world. And all so, over the world. All over Trinidad, the world. Tobago, Ghana. I, I see it. I see it. Yeah. La ladies right. and gentlemen, she is glo she is internationally known. You better know it. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> and not only not only that, I'm gonna let you guys know right now, her streamline and automation is is bar none one of the best <laughs> like like your tech your text goes out like like clockwork your email marketing fleek copywriting i'm like oh my god it, Thank you. you guys can learn so much like over and over and over again just by the little bit of stuff that she uh, said on the show today so if you can photo id so what i'm going to do now i am going to show you guys what a power of attorney form looks like hey, let me let me know if you guys have any questions type in your questions type in your questions about this scenario for the most part, the two major players or the three, ma four major players, the successor can stay out. And the successor comes in and out. That is a moving part. But the major players are the principal, the attorney in fact or agent, the third party witness, depending on your state, you may need two, and the notary. Of course, everyone needs a valid photo ID. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to show you guys what a power of attorney form looks like. Da, 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 da. 
Let's pull this up, pull the power of attorney. Boom. Can you guys see my screen real quick? <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see here. All right. Can you guys see um, the e form screen? Okay, perfect. All right. So I want to show you how many different power of attorney forms there are. Okay. This is a site that I use um, for power of attorney forms than just to kind of like understand what's going on in the industry. Um, so you have your power of attorney for individual. You have your living will, which is considered like a power of attorney. You have your IRS power of attorney form, real estate power of attorney. I've done quite a few of those. The real estate power of attorney is basically when, like, let's just say, uh, Ben is in Atlanta and he has a house in Chicago. The attorney in Chicago is going to represent Ben at the closing. So Ben needs to sign a power of attorney form giving authorization for the lawyer to represent him at the closing. That makes sense? So you would do like a real estate power of attorney. More the motor vehicle power of attorney. These are always funny. That's when your car gets towed, right? <laughs> and um, you know, use out there club and popping bottles, wood grain gripping, champagne sipping, and all that. And uh, you, <laughs> your car got towed when you came out the club. So a lot of times they need to assign someone else to to retrieve that vehicle. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot from it. Don't forget to click the link below for my special discounted price.